Packard. I do a lot of that training and education, so you may have seen me at previous events. Welcome back. I'm going to go through our PC side and then our print masterminds are going to go through our print business for you. But let me start with some of these products here. I'm going to start with you, not only the beginning of our company, but the uh, beginning of this company as well, Star Wars. So we have as much Star Wars as you could possibly Star Wars on top of your Star Wars. This is a brand new Pavilion 15 Star Wars limited edition. Now I'm going to take you on a bit of a journey, a journey back through time. So in 1939, two knock-around blokes, you may just know them as Hilda and Packard, we call them Bill and Dave, but they invented a very special product. One of them was just here actually, it was an audio oscillator in 1939. That first customer was a very, very special one, Walt Disney. That audio oscillator was used to precisely tune the cinemas for Disney's release of Fantasia. We priced it at 54.40 because that was one of the guys' favourite numbers. Should have been worth about 400 bucks, but already HP are making sure we're innovating and right at the forefront of that cost structure. And this is the pinnacle of this brand, right? When Disney and HP started together, we've grown together, and of course, this is where this device has taken us. So there are over 1,100 pieces of Star Wars dedicated content in here. You plug in a USB stick, R2-D2 beeps at you, because why the hell not? BB-8 can scream at you when you want to plug things, and there's movies, there's cutscenes. The Death Star is your recycle bin, because it should be, right? It's a Star Wars device, so why not? So everything within this device has been totally Star wars -ified. So the icons, the backgrounds, the cutscenes, the, the screensavers, we didn't touch this device other than turn it on, out of box it, and here you are. So this is what the customer is going to experience at home. When you get the device, the foam that covers it is in the shape of a TIE fighter because a Star Wars customer wants that sort of stuff, right? We want to make sure we're going to give them this limited edition product, very limited ranging in Australia, very small amount of units. This is that collector's piece in an IT world. You can see that battle worn exterior. We've gone with the dark side because no one likes the good guys. We all want to be that little bit of evil, at least entertain that within our own psyches. And inside, you're going to get a full HD screen. You're going to get a Core i5 process, two gig graphics, and a bunch of other specs that have already written down in those little sheets for you. But I think you'll agree, this Star Wars library is brilliant. Um, there's cutscenes, behind the scenes footage, and all in all, what we like to think is a really beautiful pinnacle of the partnership between Disney and Hewlett Packard. Of course, you come around and have a good play with these, but in instance of time, let me take you through some more products. Now, just due to the fact that it's the closest one to reach, I'm going to show you what is arguably the best looking product to come from the Hewlett Packard stage. Hey, if I wasn't in a lovely, loving, long-term committed relationship, this would be my new thing, right? This would be what I would take home and I would put on a pedestal because it needs to be. This is the Spectre X360 Rose Gold Special Edition. So when I say Special Edition, this is only worldwide a very limited run of units and we've made that for one particular retailer in this country. This is just the traditional Spectre X360 but we've double it. So what that actually means is when we build this unit after we've milled it out of aluminium, after we've diamond cut all the edges, after we've sandblasted the top, after we've chucked in the latest 6th gen Intel Core i processor, we double dip the chassis. And what that means is we paint the surface of the device in a chemical solution, we drop it in another substrate, and that tints up the top surface layer of the metal. That is black metal, that is not paint, that is not gloss, it's not going to fade away or flake away, that is the surface of the metal. Now I said double dip, so there is one more dipping process. We rub the outside again with another solution, we dip it in another thing, and that tints that edge rose gold. So this is, the, again, it's all about partnership, right? The Bang & Olufsen partnership. Of course, this now has Bang & Olufsen tuned speakers. So this device, in its prototype stage, is shot all the way over to Denmark to a guy, and I don't know his name, but he's the chief tone master at Bang & Olufsen, and his sole job is to listen to HP equipment. So when you think of the partners of B&O, Audi, Aston Martin, AMG, B&W, Hewlett Packard, it's a very select group. And of course, they're all brands, they're all companies that have designed as a key pedigree of their business, and it's certainly one of these. Not only does this have an ultra, class leading keyboard and a 1.5 mm key travel. It also has a glass trackpad. So I think it's a joke that I can get full high resolution surface photos of Pluto, but I can't always right click on stuff. Right, why has technology gone this way? And I think you'll agree, if you've used our existing Spectre X360, a glass trackpad is beautiful. And it's certainly going to give you that exact same experience on this device, even with that double dip and that's actually process. Make sense? Beautiful. Remember, these have metal injection molded micro hinges, which I know you all woke, woke up this morning wanting to know more about, right? God, I hope someone at HP shows me a metal injection molded micro gear hinge. Well, this has it. And there's no other convertible, no other two in one, no other sort of 360 flip round from anyone else that has that. So not only is in each hinge has four separate gears that lock them together, it means you can put them on these ridiculous angles and it's not going to just flip and bend and fall flat. Because when a customer does this all day, they want to keep doing this all day. Yeah? And that's only available in our Spectre X360. So as we move down the lineup, we have its namestay in the Spectre X2. I think it's fair to say we probably haven't had the market leading product 
in that detachable. There's been some very good complementary products from our partners. This is where it changes because it's all about that compromise that you have to make, that compromise that you make with a two-in-one device that you don't have to make anymore. Because this is the exact same keyboard from the Spectre X360. That same build element you service, that same one and a half mm keyboard travel, that same last track pad. We lifted off the Spectre X360, put fabric on the back, jammed two speakers at the top and called it something different. But shouldn't innovation be born from some of the best things you've ever done? And this is that Spectre X2. So not only do you get a class leading in fitness at 8 mil, not only do you get amazing lightness at 830 grams, you're also getting 6th gen Core M. And remember, with 6th gen Core M benchmark, life for life is faster than 4th gen Core I in the electrical space. So you're getting the battery life, you're getting the power, you're getting the portability, but you're also getting something very, very special, an Intel RealSense 3D camera on the back. Now, not only, as you Paul mentioned before, we have this blended reality space, right? But you can fix from a physical world into a digital world, so you can work on them physically again. And this is what enables our customers to do with an Intel RealSense 3D camera. Now, HP in the past, and our competitors have also always put these on the front, we put it on the back. So not only can I hold this as an object, tap on the corner of that object, but find it its exact two millimeter size, which can make, is amazing for anyone in the field, a student, measuring objects, and it's an expensive measuring tape, I know, but that's not all it can do. I can scan an object, load that as a character into Minecraft. Kids are gonna go to the stack over that. Right, or I could even scan my face and load me into a, as a game character, as a playable character. Or I can just 3D scan myself and take on in my very own action figure. What a bloody good excuse to play with yourself when you get home as well, right? Companies like Ikea. So I can bring in Ikea furniture, drop it into my physical home and see if it fits. It's not going to make the relationship any easier when you put things together, but it'll certainly make sure it fits and looks good. And of course, again, partnerships. HP and Ikea, HP and Intel have made this amazing product. Now the kickstand. It's all about this kickstand. Not only does it go back to any angle, not only is it milled out of stainless steel. It's not cut, it's not formed, it's not bent around, it's not hollow. It's solid, three and a half mil mill stainless steel, because milling is better. We mill the chassis out of it, so why not stand? It's braced in the back. We can fix and repair these as well. So not only are they a serviceable unit that we can put into enterprise, put into business, we can also make sure schools can have serviceable, ready-to-use devices. They don't need thinner and lighter and faster than the competition, but have things like a class-leading keyboard and an amazing camera on the back. Now, of course, we encase that top piece in glass, not because we ran out of metal, but that's because where Wi-Fi is going to work better. When you put glass around the antenna, you get better signal. <coughs> And this customer needs that, and that's why we've done it. And that is the Spectre X2 from HP. Now keep in mind, it's not just the two speakers in the, in the body, in the tablet, sorry, but it's called keyboard. There's also two speakers in the tablet, so if the mouse checks out, that's four in total. Um, and that's going to be a pretty comprehensive all day back product. Okay. The thinnest consumer device HP has ever manufactured. Now let's compare apples to Apple or maybe HP with someone else. So of course with this particular device we've gone sub 13mm, in fact it's actually 12.9mm, but we have fit in a 6 gen core I. Now most people think at this sort of thin chassis you only have room for one port, we actually have every single one. Because our business customers, our students, our consumers require, in this premium fit and light space, require the most amount of connectivity. So there's three USB 3.0, there's a full size HDMI, Port is even a full size standard message parcel. The screen is amazing. The screen is matte finish. I can't tell you who makes it, but I do run with Samsung and they make some very good screens. They give you what we have arguably one of the loveliest panels in here. It's matte finish. You can flip it around and see the looking quality of the product and fingerprint readers. And these work properly. Now, I know fingerprint readers four or five years ago people had their experiences with. Forget about it. This is new gen. This is the latest product we've done. It's the thinnest device we've ever made. We've been making devices for over 76 years. So that one swipe to log into Facebook, log into Windows, log into your banking is enterprise grade secure and of course works brilliantly with Windows Hello. Now not only do you have a really trackpad, normal sort of keyboard, you've got those two Bang & Olufsen tuned speakers. So the same tuning process in Denmark and of course that unique lift hinge. Terrible name, great feature, but what it will do is prop that up from the desk. Create that airflow, create that ergonomics. And as Paul said, that infinity edge look, the fact that when you look down the edge of the device, when you look through the side of the device, it almost connects magically. It just sort of effortlessly folds away in that infinity edge effect and it looks beautiful when you look at it from the front. Of course, we'll do this in QHD. We didn't do touch, we'll have made it too thick if you want touch by a spec. You have the same power, same quality, and the better form factor with that flip around. Not fit and light and color accurate screen. Of course, that is an MP13 reading. Now, along some other devices, we do also, and I do want to make mention of our stream and Chromebook devices. Brilliant for education. Now, I know um, all of you have an education focus within your, your roles, but for a thin and light device, if you want either the Chrome OS, have them properly managed, 
have a very simple rollout for an IT admin, and of course your data is totally safe in Google's cloud. We have essentially the Microsoft version of the stream, and you know, the sub $400 laptops, if you can show me a better looking one, I'd be lovely and happy to see it. That linear fiber sort of pattern on the inside, bring your style, bring your design back to the mid-range, to the entry level. So not only are you going to get something that's thin and light with a fanless design, you're getting 200 gig worth of OneDrive storage. You're getting that additional support from Microsoft with Office 365, and of course all the support from HP with the build and rollout of these devices, especially in the education space. You're getting multiple colours, one for each student, one for each year group, whatever it may be. And of course it can be very centrally managed with HP's Touchpoint Manager and other solutions that we offer. And of course we have those windows for later in the programs. Paul, is there a continuing of Tegra Chromebooks, because HP had some of those in the past. Those. That's pretty cool. Uh, look, it's in, in the Australian market, we're focusing on these. You may start to see those types of products in other markets. Uh, it's certainly where Chromebook has had some real proliferation, or even Android sort of book style products, which that Tegra device resided in. Uh, we've found in Australia that these have been working really well, which we're going to stick with currently. But so, so the technology, technology but current HP Chromebooks that were in time now, is it? Correct, okay. correct. So we have a, a bit of a mixture of streams and Celerons and quad cores and whatnot, but Intel has the major backer for those particular products that I might have found. This is our brand new NV34 curved all in one. It is the world's widest curved all in one. It is not only a 3440 by 1440 res QHD plus panel, it is Technicolor certified. So a Technicolor engineer, factory level, sits in front of every single one of those and tunes each of them to the Technicolor color space. Not only that, we've jammed six bang analysis speakers, four tweeters, two drivers. And of course, this is Australia, goddammit. If you only have one of these on your desk, have you lived a life? So, HDMI out means you can plug in our lovely Z34 inch curved monitor next to it, and you can have a man of pixels that I can't even count to. And it is an amazing look and feel with this type of product. Of course, non touch because of glass and curvature, we can't really add it to this particular product. Um, this is going to be available shortly at 3999. Uh, certainly a, a brilliant space for us to walk into. GTX graphics, top end spec as you'd expect from this product with a mixture of SSDs, mechanical drives, tricked out RAM, and, and all the rest you'd want to expect on a product of that size. Now, for those who know their 1920s furniture, we also have the Miles Van Der Rohe inspired chair leg design, molten aluminium poured into a mold, die cast, formed and polished, and again, looking like that Miles Van Der Rohe layback chair from 1927, which I know you were all about to ask about, but it's got it in there as well, so why not? This series product, which is pretty much the product here that we have. Uh, again, what I was mentioning before, you know, classic black map with a new different form from it as well. It's really kind of adjusted. We change a few materials as well. Uh, in country is very simple. You can pick everything up. Your, your in country has come through. You can change them as you see fit. Uh, also has a video in case you didn't know. Let's say you do the first time setup. You want to know how to change something. Well, there's a video that shows you open this, do this, and there we go. Uh, again, wireless is built into them, so you can actually connect up either direct or on a so always connected. Now, one of the things I've talked about was the auto temporary arm, right? And I said, oh, my daughter is pretty much a prince with his prince, and all of a sudden come in and say, where's my carpet or where's my, no, it's just paper. This is why she loves it, she just jumps down and goes, this is it, I want it. So let's do a quick demo. So I've connected up, uh, and there's always uh, theories and being live demos, right? So so my printer comes up automatically, you can see it already has the driver set up, so you can just go print. It starts the printing process itself, you know, and uh, the tray comes out. Yeah. So make sure that everything is there when you want it, when you expect it. Uh, and I'll we'll start printing off this. Of course, uh, the big problem with that is the office chip product over there, which pretty much has a similar look and feel as the model sheet. So you can 30 sheets of paper, and uh, you can scan them through. So what we've got here, the materials, we've got the whole paper tray, I'll put the over to that side while this is printing, so we can grab it. Uh, on this side we've got the auto sheet data, of course, we have the integrated trays, so your paper is not sitting or not visible, it's actually all hidden behind. So all your paper you can put that through, you can change that to put letters or, or photographs and whatnot, and again, same principle, when it's printing, the tray comes out, your photos, your papers, they're all there, not on the board where you want them to be. Uh, yes, I have. This is the other display as well. Again, previously in generations we've had touch. You've got to pretty much push to, to get the interaction happening. We've changed that interface a bit. We're actually a lot simpler, and I can pretty much glide on it. Very bright contrast is there, so you can see it very easily. Uh, what else are we talking about? Yep, there's my printer. It's all done. Hey, this is there. I'm going to come in and I don't have to fit around with it. I'm going to go through it. It's all there. Grab and go. 
page. That's quickly on the inkjet printers that we've got. I want to just show you what we've got and what little things we're doing and the things you probably think, oh, it'd be great if I had that. So, again, connectivity is easy, printing is easy, ink is easy, and both will feature active ink balancing. Active ink balancing essentially it monitors how your inks are being consumed from the colors. If one color is being drawn faster than the other, it will pretty much balance the other colors to give you an approximate color so you actually get the best out of your cartridges as it goes through. Nothing worse than having stock black and tri color. <coughs> Earlier this year, with an entry level desk jet, HP announced the features of that model were a bit more relaxed in terms of how the, <coughs> the ink. The ink tanks are used, for example, if a colour runs out, it doesn't stop you scanning and so on. Do these higher end models have that same technology? And is that technology going to be across the range by default now or only on certain segment or printer? Uh, it's, it's specified, but let me get back the details for you as to which one is a good question. I'll find out which printers actually are continuing. But going forward, in the, in the basic, is that the plan to have them all eventually in the future or is this something HP is it's trying on different? We're looking at how it makes sense and we'll continue that through because, as you know, the worst thing is you get a printer, you, you want to print something off and all of a sudden you realise nothing works. So yeah. we want to make sure we cover everything. So, but these ones, completely. these ones have it. That, these ones have it, but the scenario is if you're doing a casual print, you pretty much don't know when the ink runs out. Make sure you still can scan, you can still print in a different yep. color rather than stopping it. Speaking of home, let's go to the bigger home in just a second and I'll introduce you to Tony. Thank you guys. So, um, this is the HP LaserJet MFB 577 car machine which um, we launched as part of this launch and the 477 which is the Pro Series. This one is aimed at the enterprise market, um, it uses around about 5 to 15 and we said it prints about 7,500 pages a month. This one prints about 4,500 pages a month. And what I wanted to do is take you through some of the technology that's very intelligent because a lot of the technology that we've made and the advancements that we've made are on that, like I said, the color, the color system, the toner level. So what happens with our toner is that very quickly, our toner particles need to be hard on the outside and soft in the middle. They need to be hard on the outside because as you hear a, a printer start, it actually smashes those particles together to electrophorically charge them. So when it smashes them together, if the hard, if the outside of them are not hard like these m &Ms, get smashed, the edges of them start coming apart and becomes defragmented. And the bottom of them, you can see down here there's toner particles at the bottom, that's actually lost toner. So what happens is you don't get as much printing out of the cartridge if the toner particles on the outside are not, are not hard enough. So what we've done is we've created really hard toner particles in the Color Speed 3 technology. So you can smash it as much as you like. The other good thing about having hard particles on the outside is that you don't get, don't get degradation in print quality. So key features to the outside being hard, the soft needs to be really soft. And the reason for that is that actually the fuser melts the soft part and that's how it gets the toner on the page. Now, it needs to be soft because the harder it is, the middle bit, if it's not soft enough, it requires more temperature to heat and whack, melt the wax core. So what we've done is we've actually reduced the temperature and made the soft really soft, the, the core of the toner really soft to be able to stick on the page really easily. So one of the technologies in these printers, which is new, is it's called active temperature control. And what it does is every printer most what we'll do is they'll raise the fuser temperature to a certain degree, which doesn't really change no matter if you're printing one word on the page or you're printing a full page, page bleed. These printers, the reason why they save up to 50% on energy consumption is because they will look at what's been printed and then the printer will tell the fuser, do not raise your temperature to this level. Only go up to this level because you don't have that many particles to actually fuse on the printer. So it saves a lot of energy from that perspective. Now, the other thing I want to talk about very quickly was our um, first page out. A lot of printers and our competitors, or even ourselves, we used to have our products come at five pages per minute, more increase, or 10 pages a minute. What we've done is not concentrated on the pages per minute, but first page out. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The printers will put themselves to sleep, which uses very, very little energy. And what happens is our, our previous printers used to take up to seven seconds to start up from sleep and then print your first page. So you need it to be in sleep mode so you can save energy, but you also need it to be very quick. On average, we print up to two, ten, five, but not hundreds of pages. So what they've done in these printers is they will allow them to go to sleep, but within milliseconds, they've changed their design to be able to make them print super quick. So from a first page out perspective, we've actually made leaps and bounds, and we think that's more relevant to the customer than having a hundred page per minute machine, because that actually doesn't look, make a lot of sense for customers. 
Last thing is if you will actually pursue with me this test. If anyone's got a fund that they'd like to... Ah, uh, yep, MJ, thank you very much. So what we're going to do is, um, we've changed the paper path on these machines to allow... Now, and think with me here, if you've got printers that you have at home or laser printers, normally you print um, single-sided fairly quick. Come to double-sided though, you probably take a lot longer. With these printers, we are printing, because we've changed the paper path on the machines, single-sided and double-sided exactly the same speed. And I'm happy to test it out if you'd like to give me two seconds. So, I'm going to send the printer. Okay, so I want you to start it the minute you start hearing it go on, okay? It starts the same processing. Okay, go. So this should print. Duplex. So we're shooting for around about 20 pages a minute, double side, 20 seconds for the 16 pages to print double sided. I'll print single sided and it'll print exactly the same speed. Actually, we'll shoot that the other way. But or we can just believe it. You can yeah. just believe it and save yourself a whole lot of time. But yes, I'm there about it. Let's see what single side does. So, is that my reset in this Yes, please. Mind you, I do have a uh, time to post the Oh, button. okay. Yeah. That's not a problem. I'll try to print my single side. Switch the double side off and print. I'm going to win. Yep. I'm going to do like a sketch while I'm live. I need recording as well. So this is part of our general intelligence uh, features that we've spoken about today, as well as security features. Um, there's also a whole lot of features that we've embedded into these printers um, that we can send you and give you more details on, but I've just kind of selected the first um, top three that we can take you through. Okay. How are you sending the document through the HP uh, app thingy on the phone? So we're, we're wirelessly connecting to the wireless um, setup on the printer. So I've connected to the 577 from my iPhone and I'll print directly to the printer. Uh, Tony, uh, yes. I want the staple bits. Oh, okay. Well, how about you bring <laughs> it right here and staple it, MJ? Yeah. It's great. How do I follow that? <laughs> the best body for it is in the industry, guys.